Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to the Dare to Dream video and podcast. I suppose these days they actually call that television. So we'll take it. We'll take it anywhere you are. But I'm super glad that you're here and I'm glad that um, this show just keeps rolling out and being created. It's amazing, you know, we were impacted, not just me, but by the way, my guest today, Lisa Dawn Lejoie. Mm. Best name in the world, Lejoie. So sexy. So my buddy and my my guest today that I'm excited to introduce you to, also we were hosts on BBS radio and it burned like, like the impact to the people who on the station and of course to us as hosts as well. But you know, resilience is our middle name. We just keep rocking and rolling and understanding that for sometimes for us, maybe all the time for us, things happen for a reason, right? It's meant to change the trajectory of where we're headed and how we're headed, the modality. So that's what I've been doing. And so welcome to like the new incarnation of the show. I'm actually totally digging it because it's going out in all these new places and spaces, both as this visual as well as the audio. So I'm, I'm enjoying it on podcast sites and on YouTube and TuneIn and Spreaker and Spotify and iTunes and iHeart, and I'm probably repeating some of them, but you get the idea. So here's the dealio. I was just sharing with my buddy Lisa, and I'll share with you just because I think it's good to do things we don't want to do. So I'm going to also share this because my friend Amy, oh, I probably shouldn't have said her name, but oh, cat's out of the bag. <laughs> you know, she was saying, she was really applauding me for dating right now because she said she can't like she just got off all the dating sites she's so triggered and she and i have some similarities in that we had a very rough breakup that set us askew and what i was sharing with her she was feeling a lot of she was sending a lot of i'm so proud of you debbie for doing this to me and i said well you know here's the deal like I like to pull back the curtain and I just want to share and I'm sharing with you too, obviously total transparency. I'm triggered too. <laughs> I want to cancel. Trust me. I'm doing these texts with somebody and I'm like, comes the night of and it's like, God, I just like to hang out here with my dog. God, I need to wrap that gift for the birthday party this weekend. <laughs> God, I need to do my nails. God, like anything will come up to not. And the only reason why I went is honestly, I thought, how would that feel to you? I have to go there. Like, how would you feel? You had plans with somebody new and they canceled, right? And you'd sort of be like this. So <laughs> I thought I can't do that to another person. I have to have some integrity. So I did, I went, and I was incredibly pleasantly surprised. It was so much fun. I thought I don't, I even had a boundary. I can only stay for an hour, but I ended up staying for like three and a half, something like that, two and a half, three hours. Yeah, it was a late night and fun. We had a blast. I, I didn't expect we'd even have things in common. We had a lot in common. Who knows where this is going to go or not go, but the fact is I went and here is the deal. So what I was sharing with my friend whose name shall not be named again, but you already heard, is that um, so trust me, I'm triggered too, but I go. And here's the thing. I believe that I, can, I don't have to be fully healed before I do something. I can go ahead and do it anyway. And it, I'll start to get healed. Like as I go on dates, my ex is going to start to be way in the distance until he's like specs and molecules that are just totally transmuted and bye-bye, right? Like dust in the wind. And that the new will be brought in and that my heart will continue to mend and heal. And like also to go out, I think is very important for one's um, non-ego, but just feeling of self out in the world that it's like, oh, I am really attractive. Oh, I can do this. Oh, that was fun. Oh, I can find a man kind of attractive. And so all these things are very healing. So I'm sharing that with you because love and relationship may be your deal and you've been really hesitant there so if there's anything here that is of use to you use it take it and it may be another place of space in your life where you're really holding back and you're waiting for everything to be in line and it's not yet but don't wait just start doing it nike had it right baby just do it mm -hmm. so speaking of which i would like to introduce you to the sponsor of this show who i'm very 
very proud to be connected with, and that's Thinkific. And if you don't know them, man, go run. I mean, run, run. If you're on the computer, then just open a new tab, but make sure we're still open. It's think.cc slash Deb. That is my special special for you. It's th nk.cc slash deb. So who is Thinkific? It's a popular software platform. It enables entrepreneurs to create, market, sell, and deliver their online courses. I'm telling you, and I'm going to let it be known, I got the heck off of Udemy. Udemy has screwed me and everybody else I know by selling my stuff for nothing. And I get these uh, checks. I cannot believe what they're making and what I'm not. So my stuff is off totally off Udemy. I was looking for an amazing platform and this is it kids. You can earn online with Thinkific tools. So easy peasy lemon squeezy and it's beautiful. And you can turn your expertise into a sustainable business. Again, it's thnk.cc slash Deb. Discounted prices through this Dare to, Green, Dare to Dream TV video podcast only. And it's an all-in-one platform. You can easily create, market, sell your own online courses. And if you want to go pro plan, there's basic free, there's pro plan, your choice, dare to dream viewers and listeners only, plus lifetime support for Zippo, priceless. Go to thnk.cc slash Deb, and we thank Thinkific for being our sponsors. I'm a media visibility strategist out into the world. I help you create a fierce and unique presence through coaching to write your book, get your book to guaranteed international bestseller, and get scheduled on media interviews. I'm a certified coach, and I help clients stop living in the shadows so they can stand out and fulfill their purpose. This is my 11th plus year of hosting the syndicated Dare to Dream podcast. I'm the author of 11 international best-selling books. I have contributed to 13 anthologies, and I've been interviewed myself on over 900 media outlets. If it feels right and light, I offer a introductory visibility strategy session, and you can receive your personalized strategy plan so you can stop being the best kept secret. Get your immediate strategy, and so you can become the visibility go-to expert in your field for your tribe. If you are interested in that visibility strategy session, go to dare to dream radio at gmail.com. Just email dare to dream radio at gmail.com. Schedule your session and stop your business from living under a rock and instead rock your business. Today, become an influencer and a powerhouse leader. So, I've got my buddy here, as I said, certified life coach, business intuitive, spiritual life strategist, Lisa Lejoie. She taps into energies and higher guides, and she strategizes transformation for you to success. She's a direct channel psychic medium who brings her revolutionary brand of unapologetic truth, baby, to the conversation. And I'm super excited to have Miss Lisa here. If you want to know more about her, her website, her name, lisadawnlejoie.com. That's L-A-J-O-I-E. And also tappingintoit.com. Miss Lisa, Lisa, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Oh, you know, I'm so happy. <laughs> nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. And I, you know, for people who know you, they're just going to yummy you up. And for people who don't yet, it's going to be like, who is this woman? It's oh. happened before. It's happened before. I'll just say for the record that you and I were together at a workshop and there was a very sensitive woman there um, who was also on stage with me who was like having a breakdown basically because she's such a deep sensitive empath she was ingesting all the energy in the rooms and she was right. tapped the f out and um i told you you need to talk to lisa because lisa will get you right like ta-da and <laughs> it had just so happened you and i were going into a room she was across the hall she saw us i said um you saw what was going on with this gal she invited you in to work on her and she came out i don't know even know if it was 20 minutes later and she was like 
oh my God, Lisa LeJoie. Like, <laughs> yeah, she was a changed human, fully whole and healed again. So that is my entree to you, to people who don't yet know you. You do so much more. So will you start with what is the work you do out in the world today? Oh, yes, I would love to. First of all, I'm so happy to be here with you on your show. That's like so exciting for me. Um, I have a cool story about you. Remember, we talked about I saw you on an interview like years ago and I said, I'm going to know her and we're going to be friends. Like, and then I saw you and here we are, right? Wow. So, you know, so sometimes crazy. connections run deep and you just have to follow and, and trust them, the process of that. Um, so it's what, I'm, what am I doing today? So today my work is an evolutionary process. It's always growing. It's always unfolding and becoming something more every time I become something more. That's really important for me to share because I didn't start out this way. I started out not wanting this gift of being able to see into uh, people's life experiences, be able to see the future of where they were headed, to see the, the horrible things that happened to them, to be able to tap into the loved ones they've lost. And you know, growing up that way, it's really tough. And at one point, you know, just to make a long story short, I'm, I'm a very spiritual based person. And I wanted to understand my dharma. And I wanted to understand, you know, all the moving parts to who I was, not just who I am as a person, but the moving parts of my soul, my divinity, my, my divine self, what the universe wanted of me with me. And so, you know, even though I didn't understand this gift of being able to see uh, more than the average person or just being able to tune in all these really incredible ways, which I understand today. I was one at one time in my life, I was around 23 years old. I had a breakthrough, a huge spiritual awakening. And at that time I realized every gift that is given or that we're born with has a usefulness. And if I can make it comfortable for me to utilize the gift, then it's going to have meaning and purpose. And if I can do that, then I'm going to be living in my dharma. And, and whatever feels right, like I do this thing, like I'm always asking, is this what you want me to do? Is from my own highest consciousness to myself as a person? Because it's, you know, we're always unfolding, we're ever unfolding. And so at that time I said, I'll do it because my gift came back after years of kind of being in the darkness myself and just struggling to be, you know, in my own change and transformation. And my spiritual awakening, that was part of the thing that happened was I awoke again into this gift of being able to see. And I realized if I could take what I know and make it really useful, and if I could take what I see and turn it into possibility, I'll do it. Because for me, being a, being a psychic is a beautiful thing, but being a psychic and predicting your future because of what you're doing today means nothing to me. What really matters to me is if I know I can bring a change to you that you're just dying to have, or if I can heal something that's plaguing you and breaking you down and breaking your connection to your dharmic passage in this life, if I can show you all the other possibilities that you don't see, because, you know, us humans, we're stuck in a framework that we're stuck in, then I'll do it. And so from there, I started doing intuitive readings and sessions and just helping that way. And that unfolded into more and more and more. And my clients actually taught me what they needed from me. And every once in a while, you know, the universe would knock on my head and go, no, you have to do more. And knock, knock, knock. And I'd say, no, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to hang out with dead people. No, 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 no. I'm good. Just doing readings. No, no. I don't want to talk to those people again. Like I did when I was a kid. I know you have to, and we're going to show you why. And so, you know, this beautiful relationship that I have with the spiritual world and my soul self and the universe, like, I could trust all these little openings. So today from all these moments of grace and, and open, open openings, let's say now I help all kinds of people doing all kinds of cool things. I do healing work. I do intuitive readings, forecast work. I do, um, uh, I help business people utilize their potential that's not tapped to be able to avoid problems and pitfalls that they don't even see happening. I mean, I, I've been so delighted to help people sell their businesses for millions of dollars. I've been delighted to help them. I know to help them understand not to get involved with certain projects because the partnerships weren't solid and the people they were working with were not in alignment and they weren't honest. They weren't the right time. So, you know, all, you know, from that to just helping people heal things that harm them and cause them pain and cause them anguish and be able to instantly create a shift uh, that they're willing to have 
Oh, it's, it's such a blessing and a joy to co-create with people, to co-create and collaborate with the universe, to be useful. And so I don't know where I'm going to go, but right now that's more or less what I'm up to. Well, okay. So many things come up with that. So the first thing is just a side note. I'm connecting another healer with you who's just opening a huge business. I know she needs to talk to you after hearing that. And yeah, you guys will create amazing things together, but you can really help guide her with that. Love knowing you. you do that. The dead people thing, Lisa. So <laughs> so curious to me, like, cause I've asked people this before, like, how do you, how are you that? And you're out in public, like, here in Los Angeles, we have the Hollywood Bowl, where like, what, five, 10, 15,000 people go in one spell to watch, you know, the symphony. And how are you sitting in a crowd like that with, mm. you're not just seeing the 10,000 people who are attending the concert, but then the 10,000 dead people around them too. Uh, you know, how do you do that? I just feel like it's beyond, oh, I turn it off. How do you manage that? Oh, this is a, it's a great question. And it truly is very difficult to do at the beginning. So when I was a kid, I could see all kinds of people that were walking around and scared the living hell out of me, to be yeah. honest. And I, I, I learned how to shut it down through a Vedic astrologer who taught me about my gift that I didn't really understand. I was 14. And so she helped me through this work, this mantra work and decision making that I didn't have to embrace the gift. And when it opened back up when I was 24, 25 years old, you know, and was shown to me, the universe showed me the use of it. A, 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 a person that's walking around is lost. And when I was shown this through my meditative process and my daily prayer and just talking to the universe and going, I don't understand, why do you want me to help those things, those beings that are walking around driving me crazy? Like, why? And it was, I, I understood that, you know, I, if I saw a child that was lost, I would go directly to the child and say, do you know where you live? And bring them home. I would, I would never leave a child stranded somewhere without trying to help. And so I was shown that it's the same thing, except I was doing it for the creator. I was doing it for, not for me. And so this made sense to me. So the gift started to come back and that whole thing started again where I could see them everywhere and, and oh, and there's so, such a huge variety. You know, just like there's a huge variety of human beings, there's a huge variety of ghosts that are walking around and spirits that are on the other side from very enlightened spirits to very unenlightened spirits walking around. And some of them are, you know, helpful and they're masters and ascended masters and they're guides and angels and all these things that we have. So I figured out this thing that if I could help the ones that were lost, I could live with seeing them. Mm. So that's my deal. I totally and, get it. I get the yeah. illusion you're, you're creating about helping a little child to get home who's lost and For sure. helping a wayward spirit or ghost to go to the light and exactly. go home that way. Exactly. So that's how I cope with it. Yeah. It had to have a purpose. So when I see some, somebody that's lost, I know the difference between an ascended, you know, ghost, let's say, and a loved one that wants to leave a message and a ghost that's lost. I've learned over but the years. But you see more than that, right? It's I not do. just you see the loss, but you also I see, I don't know, our dead ancestors. Yep. Dead ancestors. Okay. We can go all the way back in time. So sometimes there's, there's a variety of things the spirit world's trying to do. So this is kind of how it works for me. So let's say I see... This is, well, let me go back. First of all, you need to be in alignment with your own energetic space. So if your space, your chakra field is not whole and filled with you and your soul, then of course, the spirit world can bother you. The ghosts that are walking around can bother you. They can bother an empath. So if you don't know that and really keep yourself contained and fill, fill your energetic space with yourself and with the spirit world um, of you, your soul, your connection, then of course they're gonna bother you and they're gonna plant themselves right into your field and that's where you people get drained and scared and they, they, you know, they get really overwhelmed by the beings on the other side and bothered. So that's the first thing. When I started to do that, they stopped bothering me. And the ones that are really negative, they look at me and I look at them like this. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's what happens. I look at them and they look at me and I'm like, I wouldn't It's like you're bother. the psychic mafia. Don't even go no, there. No, don't even go there. And I do it to my friends too, like, you know? So sometimes my friends are like being bothered. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't go there either, you know? So you, you, there's ways to kind of shield yourself. You know, I don't really turn it off. I have a plan. And the plan is I'm going to be useful when I can. 
and I always will do a service if I need to for a spirit that's on the other side that's lost or that needs help. And sometimes what I'll do in a big environment that's filled with energy and negativity and all that stuff is I'll clear the space myself for everybody that's in it. That makes sense. So you when know, you're so, talking to me right now, yep. do you just see me or do you see other well, with you, I, like in the moment, I'm really just present with you in the moment, but there's definitely lots of helpers. You're very surrounded by light and helpers, like very, very much so. So you have like ascended masters that are trying to serve what you're going through right now in your life. I could see them They're They're around, uh, you know, they're trying to help you and they're very Egyptian and like, I don't really know. It's like you have some gods there as well. It's, it's interesting. You're very surrounded by a lot of helpers who are trying to enlighten you and hold space for you to walk the passage of complete transformation and change mm -hmm. uh, because it looks like you're in that big space right now of just really filling yourself up with your own soul and your own dharma and everybody else and everything else needs to go. And so there really, there's this huge energetic field around you that's not just you watching over you. And they're like, I keep seeing like uh, these gods from Egypt. It's really weird. And they're standing outside looking out from you. One has your back, one has your front. They're like, I wouldn't bother coming over here because this woman is right here with me and we're, we're containing her space. So that's super interesting. And I think you asked for it. You asked for help. You asked for your space not to be bothered. It looks like they're there because you called them in and they're just trying to serve you so you can just be where you are and fill that space up because you're so strong as an empath that that's what happens. Empaths are so open that they just say hello to everybody's energy. Hey, what's up? And they don't even realize like it's okay for you to have your own too. Satellite dish. No, seriously, it's okay for you to just be like, hey, no, I got, you know, I have, I have, you know, I'm allowed to just be in my space with myself, you know? Yeah. And it looks like you have a program that you named after me um, called the D Factor. Is this true? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and it is. It's named exactly after you. <laughs> Tell us about D Factor, because actually I wouldn't want this named after me, but but when you learn what it actually is, because I think the word is actually doubt, not Debbie or Dashing yeah. or Dare to Dream. So yeah. talk about the doubt or the D Factor. So this is this is a, a it's came through my work, you know, it came through people asking me to help them because um, basically the biggest struggle people have is doubt. They don't realize they have the power in their own hands to demolish it and completely destroy doubt in seconds. You know, it's very easy. So it's just that they don't know what to do. They don't know there's a process they can think about. I have doubt from doubt. You have the opportunity to make new decisions from those, you know, most people who have doubt want, don't want to feel that way. It's not like we're all happy about being doubtful. We have a desire, which is another, the other one of the D's is desire for change. And from desire for change, that's kind of like stage one, a decision gets made, which is stage two. From the decision that gets made, you, you put into practice your determination to start taking action that will lead you to the change and re resolving the doubt. And then the, the fourth process is, and they're interchangeable, which is interesting because you can be anywhere, uh, is the devotion and the practice of truly wanting to live in the divinity that you are which is the unfoldment and stage five is like living in your dharma living in your divinity which has no space for doubt when you are on purpose there's no space for doubt it doesn't exist you just know there's challenges but there's not really doubt in accordance to those challenges because you're living in your dharma you just get determined and you decide every step of the way to just keep going forward until you are in this new space the space with your dharma where you're living your purpose and you're living in your your light you know for me it's like i have this other program kind of similar it's like it's called, going to be called launch your light because to me that's what we're all really needing to do today is launch it out into the world so everybody can see each other from this other place in reality and time you know so working on that now that's a beautiful, I love the transformation you offer there and the, the complete arc from this one space where I can sense all the constriction and limitation mm -hmm. to this other where it's just, you know, infinity and beyond, like, what do you want to create and 
you're right there with the creator. So super powerful. Mm -hmm. We have more coming up with Lisa Dawn LeJoie. And you are watching and listening to Dare to Dream podcast. If you would like your free report on publicity, how to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media today, go to debbiedashinger.com and just get your free report. It's D-E-B-B-I, D as in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, debbiedashinger.com, free report, publicity, how to become the go-to expert expert and be interviewed on media today 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 so um how lisa can we access i love this alliteration ac access alchemy answers mm -hmm. and influential insights how mm -hmm. can we get ahead of current challenges and access our alchemy an answers and influential insights instead mm -hmm. Hmm. So the easiest way is to truly make that devotional decision to do it. So each day we practice, each day we ask questions. One of my greatest routines that I offer anybody is every day connect with your own spiritual self. Don't leave your bed until you say hello to your greatest love of all, which is your soul. Because your soul chose you and loves you and adores you and wants you to be in alignment. So that partnership is the first place to get insight because your soul has things it wants to do with you every single day to complete the process of your happiness as a person and also like to live in that connection to thrive in this world and get those insights and get those intuitions and get the fun of, of this whole experience and make the influence that you're supposed to make every single day in whatever way you need to. So to, to move through the process is to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask the questions that you need to ask and listen for the answers. That's something else that happens. That's why people have so much doubt is they don't ask. They don't want to ask anything of their guidance. They don't want to ask anything of the universe. They don't want to ask anything of themselves. Your answers are right there if you're willing to ask the truth. You know, there's a, there's a thing in yoga we say truth is your name. Hmm. Say that. What does that mean? Truth is your name. It means all of us are born with the truth. That is our name. We're born to be in the truth. The truth is exactly who we are in every single present moment. So when you, be, when you are in alignment with truth is my name at all times and you activate that, then you're always looking for the influence. You're always looking for the intuition. There's no, you're always looking for the real truth. You know what I mean? You're not looking for other things that will camouflage the truth in itself. So knowing when, when we say that, even the words themselves, truth is my name. If you just understand, if, if you just say that truth is my name, it's very hard to lie if truth is your name. <laughs> it's like, it's very hard to not answer when you say truth. Yes. What is it? How can I help you today? It's like somebody saying, Lisa, yes. How can I help you today? It's the same. It's a, it's a philosophy of life. It's a philosophy of living. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you said earlier, Lisa, that our soul chose us and loves us. And we're talking about our name has truth and that we already have a connection. We don't have to seek it out, but we can invite it in and ask from it. Mm -hmm. So viewers and listeners here, definitely, I know they really want their sole purpose to be aligned, have impact on the world, but many of them need direction there. So is there a way you can assist us, them, in a general sense to have sole purpose with impact on the world? And what direction can we take to align there? Mm -hmm. To align with your own soul's experience. And yeah. purpose. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing is, you know, lots of people use that terminology there, but most people don't understand what it is. Right. And, you know, like my sole purpose is not an easy one. Like try being psychic in this world, trying, you know, doing what I'm doing for a living. You know, it's really not. And sometimes really what's happening is people talk about their sole purpose, but their sole purpose is really aligned with what they like. It's not really the truth of what their soul might want to do. It's a, it's a terminology that people are throwing around. Your purpose might be very difficult. Hmm. Your soul's so give experience. Give us some examples, like Gandhi. Um, Look at Gandhi. 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 Go ahead. Sorry. What else would be a difficult um, soul purpose to have to live up to and execute out in the world? For sure. Uh, some of them. Some of them are to experience abuse, to experience difficulty, mm -hmm. to 
overcome the challenges of those adversities of growing up and really like you're you're having to transcend the darkness so that you can help others that's kind of what i did and i know that you know we could share we could share some of that that's a huge soul purpose that that for many people we we di diagnose it let's say or we dissect it like well that's what happened but what if it is really your soul calling to go through that so that you transcended it to be of service to other people in the future that's a very hard passage to walk through but it can be your soul's purpose we associate today's sole purpose of what we're doing for a living because that's the world we've created, but it's not necessarily the true world that your soul wants to live in. Your soul's purpose may be to completely and thoroughly enjoy this world, mm -hmm. fully and completely embracing every single aspect of it. Your sole purpose may be to design something magnificent that no one else has accomplished yet, and it's going to take a lot of effort on your part as a person to be able to accomplish that like being einstein it's mm -hmm. or being a tesla or flying to the moon or you know being that scientist trying to find a solution for something and you know these 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 spine scientists are some of the most intuitive people in the world who don't claim to be but they really are they're so tuned in and hooked up that they're seeing molecules and how the molecules are shown not easy to find cures can be a sole purpose not easy to find those things so the why i'm saying all that is because don't get comfortable with what you think your purpose is really ask your soul what it is well so you know does the soul in its purpose mm -hmm. in this incarnation does mm -hmm. it have um, does it set up the matrix of what the body is going to look like or is the body malleable and we can change and recreate and make it into what we want. It's not a solid thing. It doesn't have to be fat, short, thin, I don't know, whatever, lumpy, <laughs> mm -hmm. fit, you know, all these different things. Can it seem like we are one thing solid, but we're malleable and can make a new choice? Or is it actually the soul says, no, I came in specifically to look like this? The soul usually, as far as I'm concerned, because I've talked to thousands of them, is choosing specifically the design of you mm. it's part of the love it's part of the devotion is you're perfect the way you are you're designed with the right background with the right dna with the correct problems or possibilities of problems for the exact lessons that you might need to go through and you have to remember the body is a co-creative experience so the body can you know it is part of the wholeness. I call the body part of the Trinity. So your body can create problems just to showcase to you what you need to do. Your body is part of the soul's process. It goes like this. When you're born, when the soul actually goes inside of the womb, inside of the body, they've met on a level that most human beings will never understand because every single cell in your body knows exactly what your soul wants to do. Every single cell knows exactly what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it. It knows, it has the memory imprint and the connection of the soul living inside of it. What happens is we get re deprogrammed from that. And the minute you activate your soul and you start thinking this way, okay, so you know what my soul wants to do. So what happens is when you start researching and exploring your purpose, your body has a physiological reaction to the truth. So when you are seeking your purpose, your body will also respond with exhilaration and excitement because it wants to tell you, yeah, that's it. That's it. So if it's change your hair, if it's look different, if it's go to the gym, if it's move to another country, your body has the messages to say, yeah, like you are in response with the right memory that it knows of your soul's purpose of what is what you need to do like i'll give you an example a quick one i went to arizona i went to arizona oh my god and i knew for like i don't know like since i was 10 years old i heard the word arizona and i knew i had to go there i didn't know when i'm i'm 20 years old 23 years old or something i know now my body's like arizona arizona i started getting uncomfortable my entire body started breaking down Every time I, I woke up in, in Montreal, Quebec, my body was having a nervous breakdown being there, okay? So I said, okay. And then I said, what? You need to go to Arizona. Okay. So I went. And when I went, my body had such a huge reaction to this place. It showed me memories and incarnations. Wow. And I started to feel, you know, deja vu. It's not deja vu. Your body remembers because your soul told your body what's going on. 
Mm. You know, it has the imprint. Your cells of your body remember what you're meant to do. And for me, Sedona, Arizona was extremely important for my, my passage and my growth as a psychic medium and as a person. And I had to be there. So your body is always telling you the, the things that you need to know along with your higher mind, your intuition, and you and your soul as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I will say that I, um, although I, I don't have the gifts at all that you do, I, I have these senses that are so strong, I don't even try to override them. So as far as locations go, mm -hmm. um, I easily, most places I do not even resonate with. I can be there and just know this is not yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be this very rare experience where it's just kismet. I feel right there. I feel light there. I feel like I don't want to leave. I feel nested. I feel mm -hmm. um, I could have a home here. I've had it in countries and I've had it in certain cities without a doubt. And so I, I understand that feeling when there's that resonance and you really get it like on every level. <sighs> Mm -hmm. something and I think it's awesome what you're talking about that you were able to go there and then start downloading or seeing the visions uh, in that, that let you know how right that was that you were there of times you had been there before that there's something there's that connection yeah it was really beautiful so the way like to give you some practical advice like hey what do you do so yeah. the first thing is to actually design a plan to have a conversation with your own spirit so there's a couple things you can do numerology astrology a great path to find practical clarity around what your dharma is you unfold it whatever way you want but what your path your sole purpose which is your dharma it's what you're meant to do can be found in these scientific processes and metaphysical processes, which are very helpful to ignite awakenings. Um, so that's one thing you can do. The other personal things you can do is each day ask, get a soul journal, sit down, get a soul journal and start everyday conversations with your own soul. All right. What is it that you want me to do for you today? Because we assume we know, and sometimes we don't, what do you want me to do today? How can I serve you? What do you want me to grow into? What do you want me to become that I'm not? Because what happens to most of us is we hit the learning wall and then we show up to the questions. Imagine just asking every day instead of having to hit a wall. What are the lessons I need to learn? What do I have to become so you can live in that place that you want to in this process of this life that we have together? Mm -hmm. Ask your body, okay, since you know more than I do, tell me what the soul wants. And start listening, taking time to meditate and asking your body, how do you want to be? What shape do you want to be in? What type of food would you like to eat for your sole purpose? How would you like to show up to that? It starts the, the cycle going. It starts the healing journey and it starts the transformational journey. And expect you're going to have to grow because you will. Expect that you don't always have to hit walls. You can actually be that empowered that you're just in charge of it. You're prepared for it because you're in alignment with what's next. So I ask myself, what do I have to become? And every once in a while, I'll be like, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I don't like that answer. I don't want to do that. And, and we have conversations and that's what I do. I'm like, I, no, like when I had to become a medium, I'm like, no, I really said I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? No, you have to. And then the conversation begins. Well, tell me why I have to do that. Give me the meaning. Mm. And then all of a sudden now I'm in the process and I'm learning mm. about why. And I'm learning about my soul purpose and my soul is saying, because I want to do this. And it's not all about you, Lisa. It's not all about you and your body. It's about me too, right? And then we're in this un unraveling conversation, which is my... Yeah, life. you're in a boardroom, basically, right? I, you're that's how I play it out. Yeah. Very you're at the much so. Table. You got to do a conversation on the table and it's like, I would like to, okay, I have a vote. I want to start <laughs> doing this. I counter that vote. I don't want to do this. Okay, why do you want to do that? I mean, it really is like a boardroom mature conversation where everybody gets to put their ideas and information on the table and then you can make a really informed decision. And it sounds exactly. to me like what you're saying is that every exactly. time you have this boardroom, virtual boardroom kind of thing, that you actually find out the information that allows you to know, that pulls back the curtain to why. 
like when you said earlier, you know, understanding to return a lost child to their home mm -hmm. was the illusion you received about allowing in the ghosts, the other beings and who are walking the planet yeah. and how you were there to help, that you would receive information from your soul saying, here's why I want you to be a medium. And then it's like, oh, okay, all right, that makes sense. And then when I, you know what, when I don't like what my soul says, I'm like, well, anyways, I'm gonna go the big guy because I don't like what you're saying right now. <laughs> do I have to do that? So, you know, the, the, the experience unravels in a much more pleasant way. And what happens is I, I, you can get really deep in your questions, you know, like, it's okay, well, what do I have to heal? How do I have to eat? Where do I have to go? What do I have to do? What do I have to transcend in myself? And you ask those questions. How? Who do I have to meet? What do I? Because we normally will flow and bump into the flow versus I'm in charge and I kind of know. I kind of know because I'm asking. It happened with you when I met you at the EBC. I was like, what do I have to do to connect with her? Go outside. Okay, so I went outside. Remember when we bumped outside? We bumped to each other outside and I was telling you what my ask was on the stage. And I was like telling you that I knew that I would meet you. That was all soul driven. So all soul driven. I did the exact thing that I'm telling you now. Why is she important? You know what I mean? Why do I have to connect with that person? And when you're doing this ongoing dialogue, you know, like we do with ourselves or other people, you become so in charge. Your manifestation accelerates tenfold. You don't have to, we don't have to struggle as much. There's always challenges because that's just life. You know, sometimes becoming isn't fun and we don't want to do it, honestly. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have to negotiate a little bit, you know, but yeah, that's good. I mean, that's healthy. It sounds to me, you know, then you're not doing something you don't want to do. And it sounds like you're fully aligned. Then when you choose to step into it, you have all the information to do so. And right before we take a break, I want to ask you something that you alluded to earlier when you were talking about some of the difficult things a soul might choose. Mm -hmm in this lifetime and you started out by saying something that is your experience which is to have extremely difficult childhood of darkness yeah. and of course i completely resonate with that as well i had something um I, I would use those words to describe where i came from so my question is so why so got it <laughs> interesting choice soul this is my boardroom right now but interesting choice soul and even though I see some of the pieces without a doubt having grown up feeling completely not lessened to right mm -hmm. with narcissists you're not going to be heard and look no. what I do for a living right I listen to people I'm curious I uh, teach visibility I interview I'm interviewed yeah. I'm on the red carpet like it totally I get it and also the p part of uh, not feeling seen or special and you know certainly I hope but it is my intention every client I have that they know that they really feel that for me like I actually really fall in love with people I work with you do I do I, do. I think they're magnificent I just see their beauty and yeah. how special they are yeah. and I also want them to take that out in the world and to know I can be in front of a camera, I can be in front of a mic, I can write that book because I have something to say. So that is that piece that I am aware of. But the over, um, the, the arc of the whole thing, the umbrella, if you will, of the why, why the darkness to transcend here? And you're the great person to ask because in my eyes, you really exist here. Like, Someone who might meet you, Lisa, would never know from whence you came and the choices you made as a teenager and a young adult. Yes. So it's amazing mm -hmm. what you Thank healed you. and who you be today. So mm -hmm. tell me about that. Why this and then what is the gain here? Yeah, the, the thing that's really important, I really want to clarify this for everyone and, you know, who's listening. And it's very important. Not everything is... A, People have this thing, they say, everything has a reason. It's true. You can make a reason out of anything. You know what I mean? And then there's things that happen to us that the soul chose and things that happen to us because we're free will human beings and we've been neglected and abused and not taken care of correctly. So an opportunity came through that's very difficult. And I'll use an experience that I think is important. I was abused as a child. And when I got older and I did the healing, 
I stopped that molester from molesting me. I made those choices. I was, my soul was like, that's enough of this. This is not your life. And, but what happened is my parents didn't want to live in their dharma at that time. They didn't want to take charge of their responsibility as parents. The truth is I wasn't supposed to be abused when I went to research my dharma and when I went to research my soul path because I did that in, in personal regressions and all the work I do is all about transcendence and you can map back to your soul choices. I did not choose that. I chose other things, but I did not choose that. And I remember the exact moment when, because I had to go back in regression and look, when it happened. Now, the abuse of my mother, yes. The struggle with her, yes. The sexual abuse, no. So once I understood, because, and it's, you know, I had to go back in time and do the spiritual analysis of what happened, what, what really went wrong there. And it was clear there was a free will choice of a neglect from my parents. And because of that, the abuser was able to get in, but he was not supposed to be in my existence as a young child. And I knew it because when I went to the regression, I remembered the, I remember the creator coming to me and saying, this is not what you're supposed to be going through because you feel it inside when you map back and see what was really purpose driven and the lesson that I chose from a spiritual plane, the feeling and the understanding is very different. I go to the Akashic records. I work in there as well with my clients and myself. And there's, there's total definition in those places for what you chose as a person. So what's really important. I mean, this was very liberating for me to know the truth. Help me understand that while we're here, everything doesn't have a meaning. Sometimes people are creating and they have creative potential to do bad things to great people and it wasn't meant to be. It is, is the part of being a human being. When you live in this earth life, there's a creative flow in, the, in life as well that's beyond the, the spiritual realm. Your body, our bodies, the animals, the kingdom here has a co-creative process. Our bodies, our human beings can create things like that. So it truly helped me learn a very important lesson that I had to understand what was meant to be and what wasn't so that I can understand the depth of the lesson. And it helped me understand that the sexual abuse I went through, I had to go through psychological healing. I had to talk to a real person who helped in that way. And I did some spiritual healing too, but I had to realize that was an imprint on my physical reality, my body not my spiritual life. And so it changed how I did the healing process and it helped me to unfold something that now I talk about because it's important for people to understand. It's not all meant to be. It's so painful to me when I have clients coming to me and saying I was abused and I think my soul chose it and they're not sure. Let's find out. Let's find out. Find out the truth so you know how to map it out and heal it. That created great liberation for me. And the truth is my name. So I have to find the truth because that always sets me free. It always unlocks the pain of my questions of why did that happen to me? Mm. When you find the truth, it unlocks that question because that question creates an unworthy feeling. It makes us feel bad about who we are. It makes us feel blame. And it's not, there's either a reason or there's not. And there's either somebody got through the doors and got to you in a negative way, or you have a reason for why you went through that experience. You know, hmm. we're choosing all the way, right? Many times we're choosing, you know, so, and people are too. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. I'm, I'm just sort of sitting in that right now, mm -hmm. that information. Well, folks, uh, this is brought to you by Thinkific. And you can get a short demo of their online course and membership platform for entrepreneurs. And Thinkific is the online education platform for independent entrepreneurs and creators to grow their business with online courses. You can get your Dare to Dream free account or listener viewer special rates at thnk.cc slash deb. Otherwise, subscribe, kids. Subscribe to Dare to Dream, please, and leave a five-star review. You'll be the first to find out about all the new shows and things going on. And when you leave a five-star review, listen, you get the right people to be attracted to the show who also want to hear this conversation. It worked for you. Let it work for them. It counts. So we're coming back here for the final segment. This is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream podcast and video. And I'm interviewing Lisa Lejoie. You can find her at Lisa Dawn 
D-A-W-N, Lajoie, L-A-J-O-I-E dot com. Lisa, what is the one practice or ritual that you use on a daily basis that helps keep you grounded and healthy? Mm -hmm. Good question. Let me think about that just one second here. What is the one practice? Well, there's one thing I do every day. I reserve the right to change my mind. Oh my God, I love that. I've never yeah, heard and that. I yep, and I reserve the right to tell the creator no. And I really take the space in my life and in my body and in my being, and I own it and I claim it to the best of my ability each and every day and all the layers of myself on all the planes of existence, my body, my emotions, my mind. And every day I, I keep track of my truth. That is the one thing that I've been doing for a long time. When I, I, I had my spiritual awakening at 23, 24, I really understood that in knowing the truth of my darkness, I had the liberty to change. So every day I've been practicing that way of thinking and being, and that's been a life changing, life changing for me. Because the truth is, if I'm not, if I'm not feeling good, then I might need to do something. You know, if I, my mind's unclear and I'm confused then I need to do something, if my spirit needs my attention, then I need to do something, you know? So, you know, for me, that's the practice. If I need to pray and meditate, I do it, you know, but it's seeking the truth that allows me to know what I need each and every day. Mm. Awesome. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah, I do. I like that too, because I, I assume it's not just the creator, but to me, the, the bigger idea when you said that I, I reserve the right to change my mind. I mean, that's one of the most powerful things I know I could certainly give to myself in any relationship, anywhere, mm -hmm. professionally, oh, yeah. personally, you know, with my dog, whatever it is. <laughs> with myself, you know, and God knows when you're an entrepreneur and you wake up every day and you've got this freaking list that is not, it's just not going to happen, but it's a setup yeah. every day that you're going to get through it. And if you get through that much of this list, it can be very difficult. And some of us just work way, way deep into the night thinking we're still going to tackle that list, but it doesn't really ever go away. And the idea to change your mind, even about that and say, yeah, I reserve the right. I, I woke up thinking I'm going to get through this whole monster, but you know what? I'm not. I'm actually going to choose three things and everything else is gravy. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I don't like gravy, so I don't like using that word. So I'm like a, I'm like a practical psychic. <laughs> I am. I'm like, you know what? This, the world, I mean, is this, there's no, you don't have to be spiritual every day. Sometimes the most important thing you'll ever do, do is get in your sensuality or mm. go play sports for a couple of hours or, you know, talk to a friend. You know, you, you know, our truth and, the, and we, if we reserve the right, this, this, this is why it's so interesting because I remember sitting with the universe and the creator and saying, listen, I really hate being told what to do. And even by you, okay, like I love you and all that. And I know like I'm a part of you and I know earth, I'm a part of mother earth and it's all cute, but I really hate being told what to do. I'm like, what's my solution? And that was my solution. That was the clear, the words like popped into my intuitive brain. Reserve the right to always change your mind. Do not be enslaved by me, by the earth, or by anything. The truth you know? shall set you free. Wow. This is Dare to Dream, Lisa Dawn Lajoie. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Hmm. I want, uh, what I'm doing now is I want to serve in a much greater scale and be able to do more global healing and transformation work because we all need it. You know, we can heal in an instant if we don't have doubt. We really can. And we can, we can release all the pain that we experience. I want, I want to teach more and more and more about how to use the energetic systems that people have. So most of my work right now is going into programs. It's going into um, going more online so I can touch more people and help them understand their possibilities. Uh, and how to tune into their own intuition and use it and their own purpose and use it because the more of us that are launching our light, the better it is for all of us because then we won't, be, we, won't, we won't continue to apologize or support the darkness without knowing we are because the people that are hiding in the corner are, are supporting something they don't really want to have there in front of them. The more, this is something I learned years ago. When, the, when, the, when we have, the sun, when the sun's out, it's very bright. It fills all the space. And so does the darkness. As human beings, we get to choose what we're filling our space with around us. 
And if we're choosing to fill our space with the light, then the space that's around us gets filled. And the more of us that fill our space with light, that means the more of the earth that's getting filled with light. So it's my responsibility to make sure I teach people how to do that at the highest possibility and the best possible way. Because I'm a practical person, I'm not woo-woo really. I mean, if you talk to me, you'll know I'm not woo-woo. It's like, okay, let's just get this done and let's get it done and da 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 You know, let's like move through it. Let's just move through to the, the other side. So I know there's easy ways to help people just get in tune and get in touch and move it, move it through so they can spread that light a little bit farther and wider, you know? You look very pretty, by the way. I oh. just want you to know you look so pretty. Well, I dressed up for you. Yeah. You just what? You what? I dressed up for you. Aw. I'm so <laughs> grateful I get to look at this gorgeousness. Thank you. Your hair and your outfit. I'm just loving it, loving it. Thank right? you for this amazing sharing. You know, so the next year is like, it's incumbent upon us. It's here. I know you do predictions for the next year. Uh, is that something you do on an individual basis or is that something you could share with us right now in a general sense, like it's a coming down the pike people? <laughs> mm -hmm. Where's that at? Mm -hmm. So for sure I can do global predictions. Uh, I do them once in a while. Uh, like I have to sit and really tune in with the vibrations that are happening all over the world. Uh, so in the, in this moment I'm doing, uh, I have a, a product that I do every year where I'm doing personalized individual forecast readings so people can be in tune with what's coming down the pipeline for sure. You know, it's also I'll be honest with you. I don't like doing global predictions because usually I'm right and sometimes I don't see very nice things. Oh. And so what I do is I kind of keep it to myself and then once in a while I will share like listen, you got to be prepared for these things that are coming down the pipeline and do the work on yourself so that you expand. So if I tell you what I have tuned in with to 2019 and what's happening right now in the world that's why I'm building all these programs it's really important that all of us take the initiative to take charge of what is happening because if we don't it's just like it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger the darkness of humanity because we're supporting the wrong things you know what I mean so you know I I, I believe we can change you know I believe we can change and alter the course of everything that is happening right now. So we just need to take charge of doing our little part in the world that we live in to make sure that what looks like it hap is going to happen will not. Hmm. Where the world looks like it's going will not go there. You know what I mean? Okay. And mm -hmm. um, so give me a prediction. Give me a personal prediction. Oh, mm-hmm. I want people to see how amazing you are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me, let, me, let me find something for you. And while she's tapping in, I just want to say so people understand, like something happened a couple of days ago. She's in Montreal. I'm in Los Angeles. Something happened in my life a couple of days ago, like big, right? Big thing release, um, ex big emotional experience, and which doesn't happen often for me, but it certainly did. And out of nowhere, I, I get something from Lisa saying, how are you? I'm like, <laughs> why? Because she knows. She knows. I don't even, like, get it. But it's so freaking amazing. It's so funny. Once you connected with her, it's like she's got a total, it's beyond telephone line. I think she has a camera in your house. <laughs> she knows what's going on. She watches you around your life so um yeah i just want you to see how amazing she is oh uh, you're the best thank you so i'll give you there's a couple of things that like, have come up so first of all by march you're going to be your 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 uh, financial growth is going to be completely exploding so what does that mean i don't know exactly what you're going to do but you're going bigger and wider and bigger and wider and the things that you're building today will have exponential financial growth so and I know you're doing some stuff because we talk and I know a little bit about you, but March is the highlight month for the manifestation of abundance and your prosperity banging through and actually coming back. It's like by March, it is expanded and growing. You're also going to change what you're doing. 
So um, I know what you do today, but it's completely morphing into something else mm. that's more in alignment with all of you versus the pieces and parts that you've been holding in uh, and showcasing. Mm. It's completely transforming right now. There's also you opening up to uh, uh, the audience of older women. I don't know why I keep being shown that. And you're touching on something with them that's really valuable and important. You're creating something very powerful for them. It's like, and I don't know, I can't see what it is. I just know you're doing that in mid near. You're like, you know what? This is really important that we do that. I'm going to create it myself. And so you get, you get pushed in a direction of creating something for women of, of deeper age or growth and becoming like uh, helping them to find more acceptance and peace through your truth story. I also see you writing your story. So it may be all at the same time. So you're, and that's like mid year. You're not doing it yet. You're doing it once you have all the things settled for your new launch mid year. You're like, like June, July, you're enthralled in your story and completely uh, going to share it and shine it out there. And you're also going on stage at that time too. And you don't want to, so you better get used to getting on there. Okay. So I'm, so I'm told, I'm shown. Yeah. I'm told you really don't want to do it even if you're good at it, but you have to do it. You're on Ted stage. You're on these stages. You're out there and you're starting to now be a headliner. Uh, Mid-year, forget it. It's happening whether you like it or not. You're being propelled towards that. Um, those are two things. There's also your heart is having an opening in August, and I think you're going to meet somebody very special at that time. It's like you 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 infuse with somebody around August. Something happens in August. So, you know, I don't know what. I just know I, I see your heart, and it's like showing me like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm so ready. All my transformations are done. I'm letting it all in, and there's somebody right there with you. So I don't know what all that means. Good luck with that. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, I'll be there anyway to see it. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, exponent. It's a relationship that's a, a long, long, long lasting one. It's yeah. not like a fluffy one. Mm. Fluffy, not stuffy. I keep being told like it's uh, twenty years plus, twenty years plus. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, that's. Thank you. That's like amazing. That's mm -hmm. an amazing prediction. It's pretty hilarious. There's I also have another message. I have another. Hold on. Sorry, I have another message from. Uh, from the creator, let's say, it's like, Debbie, everything that was is now over. Let it go. Everything that was is really over. It's over. Everything. Everything that was. And I'm told, like, you are closing the chapter of this life, this segment of your life. All of it from now all the way back till the day that you came here. It's over. And so the guidance I'm getting is, can you let yourself restructure in every way inside? Let the cells of your body just let it go. Tell your mind it's over. You know, we need to do some shift work too, just to tell you, I mean, I'm on your show, but whatever. We need to do some shift work on letting go of the past, like just releasing that energy. We could do that. You know, we need to do that where you're just like letting go of this, the subconscious imprints of the of the past because they're like floating around you like memories and every once in a while one hits you and you're trying to do something. And it's like, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> you know, that you have this like weird reaction and it's just because you're such a strong empath. There's so much embedded in your field. We need to release that at the same time. So let's do that work. I'm happy to do it with you, obviously, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it because that's a that's a huge. Um, I think anyone would be happy to hear the prediction you just gave me, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I want to be there. And I I agree with you. You're right. I mean, also as a Cancer Scorpio Moon, come on. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like, I'm you, not you gonna can pull it off. Oh yeah, yeah. You need a vacuum. <laughs> I need. You I think need I need a vacuum. Vacuum. Hundred percent. You do. Yeah. Yeah, that was deep, man. And there's pieces of it that are really crazy. And yes, it's so true. Um, I hope that my, I'm in a one year program with somebody I love. So aging Morishita, I hope you just listen because he'll be in hilarities because he knows as intimately as anybody, my complete resistance to going on stage, even though I know every oh, time really? I get there. Oh, it's ridiculous. I didn't know that. I would have never thought that you were resistant to go on stage. I've seen you on stage. You're amazing. It's huge. It's ridiculous. And I don't, I have no understanding, but it really exists and it stops me and all of that. So he will be laughing his 
toughest off. Mm -hmm. And then it's very interesting. You would say that I've, I've sometimes reflect, as you know, I teach book writing. Yep. I've written several books. I have sort of had that weird thing or had people say to me about somehow, I don't know about writing my memoir or my story. And I've always completely rejected it. And it just so happens in this huge uh, purge that I just did of my place, complete restructuring, recycling all the RE words, you know, reinventing. I mean, I did, I cleaned and organized this place, decluttered massively, gave away, dumped tons of stuff. God, it feels good. Mm -hmm. And I found this notebook. I wrote a story when my first cat, Tucker, died. And I, I tucked the Tucker story away and, and I just, I don't know, I never did anything with it. And I pulled it out and I've just started reading it. Wow. And I, for the first time, wow. first time I've been able, it's that work, by the way, it's my other books were about how to do something that's different. Mm -hmm. But for the first time I was able to read something from decades ago and say, oh my God. There's a right, there's a real, there's so, that's so important to me. There's a real writer inside of me. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I, I was enjoying, am enjoying reading my own story, which I think I will probably publish in a short form. Because I think it's so important for people to go through the passing of a pet, it's, which is devastating. And the book, you know, it's really hopeful, helpful. And so I thank you for that because the, they're literally the past few days has been this opening around wow. that as a writer. So to hear you even, you know, bring up that piece, like the timing is so fortuitous. Yeah. And the rest. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's because you're in the end. So you just have to accept the end. It's very important. That's why I'm getting those messages. You have to accept yourself that it's over that everything you've done up till today, you're going to carry only what you want hmm. and that you're going to choose to change your mind about a lot of stuff and your ideas about a lot of that stuff wow. and you're letting go. So it's happening the, at the course of the next couple of months. You're really like, <sighs> like it's going. And that's why I see by like, and I see you getting into this, this work and just building what you have to. And then you're like ready to explode outside, outside in, inside out. Um, the other thing is the book is sexy. So I want you to know it's sexy. Wow. Yeah, no, you got, it's very, it's a sexy book. It's not a like, here's all it, you're doing it with the purpose behind making hard life experiences beautiful mm. because of who you've become because underneath all the darkness is still the person you are mm. and no one was able to break that or break that bond between you and who you truly are. And that's why I keep being told like the book is the, the love story of you and your own self. And so it's like, they're showing me this like very arousing energy and beautiful energy in it, even though it's like, it's, it, you'll have fun with this kind of energy versus like, here's all my pain. Like you already, you know, it's like, oh no, what got me here? You know, what got me here was the seduction of growth. So it looks like that. So I just wanted to tell you, like, that was extra pieces while you were talking. Yeah. Taking notes. <laughs> seduction of growth. Man, I'm I'll take excited. it. I'm very excited for you. That's so good. 50 degrees of the seduction of growth. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, so much. What do you want to say here at the end to the viewers and the listeners? Um, mostly... Don't make your spirituality like eating cereal. <laughs> what do you mean by that, dear heart? Like I mean, Lucky Charms, Captain Crunch? Yeah, like I mean, make, make your spirituality ever exploding and expanding because there's so much out there more than just what we think. I would tell your viewers to know how exciting and seductive the universe is and how much love there is and that it's a passionate connection and relationship on every level and it's exhilarating and exciting it's not just illuminating your body knows how to feel excited about the spiritual world so let that connection unfold and whatever you do you know just know just know the truth is your name mm -hmm. 
To find out more about her, go to tappingintoit.com as well as lisadonlejoie.com. And Lisa, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I love you. Love you too. And I end today's show with this quote from George MacDonald from the Seaboard Parish. And the quote is this, everything has a soul and a body. Mm. By the body, we know the soul, but we are always ready to love the body instead of the soul. Therefore, God makes the body die continually that we may learn to love the soul indeed. In the next weeks on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Anita Morjani as well as Dr. Sue Mortar. You're totally one are going to tune into these. These are going to be, again, off the hook conversations and healings. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's very inspirational and it is it is youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And of course, your free report, free publicity, how to get booked and interviewed today. Go to Debbie Dashinger, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. And if you're ready for your online program to start to make passive income as an entrepreneur and get your programs and products out there, go to thnk.cc slash Deb. Share this link with your friends who you know need to hear this conversation. And remember, the secret of success is starting in the first place. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. It's been, as always, a pleasure.